Final Cut Pro is now available for iPad. Let me give you a tour. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and this is my son Harrison as we walk you through the new Final Cut Pro which is now available for iPad. I'm gonna walk you through all the major features as well as some prominent missing ones. But I will say that there's so much going on here that it's gonna be hard to touch all of it in this video. So if you have specific questions, be sure to throw those up in the comments down below. With that said, let's go ahead and give it a spin. <laughs> Once you open the app for the first time, you're gonna be presented with two different options to subscribe. Final Cut Pro is a free download, and then there's two different subscriptions, whether $49.99 for the entire year, which represents a good savings over the typical price of $5 a month. You can choose either one $60 a month when you pay monthly, or $50 when you subscribe for the entire year. There is a short free trial though, so you can get your feet wet before you go ahead and plunge in for the full purchase. The first thing you'll see is your projects view. All of your projects will be listed there on the left hand side. You can see I have Iceland as well as Lunar, Lunar New Year. That is a demo project that Apple provides so you can try out some of Final Cut Pro before adding your own footage and creating your own project. On any of these products, you can hit tap on edit to jump into them or if you tap on the pencil in the top right hand corner, you can change things like the name of the project, you can ch change things like the resolution of the project that you're editing in, all of that. So here we are in my Iceland project. Uh, you can see the title up here on the left to go back. We have our timeline down here. We have our preview window. And on the right hand side, we have all of our media. So you can just use the trackpad in this case and scrub through. Uh, we can see how this works. You know, she's walking down the beach. Nice shot of backpack, puts the backpack down. Reason pulls back uh, a, a lens cover, lens filter, put it on, film some of the beach here. All this is just really nice footage. I love some of these shots that we captured. So let's go ahead and look at how we can edit and change some of this stuff. So first, all of our media on the right hand side, I can choose any of these clips that I would like, something like that. I can preview it, scrub through it, nice shot of the rainbow there. We can pull these back, trim it to the right size that we need. Boom, add this media right down here onto our timeline. So it's pulled right in. If you ever wanna adjust the volume, click on a clip, tap on volume in this lower left hand corner. And we have a volume slider here. We can lower that volume down so I don't have to have the rushing water in the background of our video there. So also aside from the media, we have options for all these different effects, transitions, titles, backgrounds, objects, soundtracks, a bunch of different ones here. These can be just drag onto your project, choose what you need. There's video and audio for effects. We've got transitions here. There's not nearly as many built in here for uh, iPad as there is on Mac, but they do have quite a good selection of all these, at least to get started with. We have backgrounds, we have some additional objects, things like heart, you saw one of those at the beginning of this video with the title there, it just pops up, because uh, I drug it on there, and then we have some audio soundtrack here. So aside from your media that you have here, you can bring these in. There's an import button here at the top. We can choose from the Photos app, which is all our ones from Photos, or if I tap on this, I can choose from files, so the files application. This also works with external drives, so if I have anything plugged in, so I have on my iPad, iCloud Drive files, I can plug in an SSD or a hard drive to the USB-C port and import all of those here too. To export projects, you also have a button up here at the top, video, audio only, just the current frame if you wanna grab the still, or the entire project to move it over to your Mac or another device. So if I choose a clip at all, I can hear my wife walking on the beach, uh, I can go ahead and open the inspector here in the lower left hand corner. I have things like uh, adjusting the video, so speed, opacity, all of these blend modes. I have uh, position and transform, so I can transform it, change the sizing of it, where it's located on the screen, crop it, distort it, all of that is still here. Audio effects, so I can do the offsetting audio, fade in, fade out, um, the voice isolation, loudness, uh, background noise removal, all that is here. There's any audio effects that you may add, and then finally any other video effects that you may add. If I tap on plus, I can also add mask and keying. There's a few different options for these, including um, the scene removal tool, green layer uh, removal tool, there's color adjustments, so you can add any color adjustments here. There's quite a few sliders that you can play with to get the color exactly right. Maybe I wanna boost up that saturation on this one with that nice uh, you know, rainbow going on there. Uh, sorry, I'm choosing the wrong clip. Let's choose this clip here, add a video effect, go ahead and add my color adjustments, color adjustments, go down to saturation and boost that up get to a good healthy spot that I like where that rainbow really pops. 
There's even support for multi-cam clips with a built-in angle editor. So I can combine angles from multiple points of view. So if I've got one here, I've got one over there, and maybe I've got one over here too. All of those can be combined and edited. You can easily move between the angles for whichever one makes sense most. So I'm talking here, but all of a sudden, you know, Harrison starts looking cute over this camera. Maybe I want to jump to that angle. Perfect. Or I want that good wide shot from this side. Perfect. I can jump to that as well. It's really easy to do with Final Cut for iPad. Also in the lower left hand corner, you have these options down here. So we looked at volume inspect. There's an option for animation. So you can choose like a clip. We have this one here and we can add keyframes and do keyframe animation for some of the basic stuff that we want to do, um, such as adjusting any of these scale position, all that can be animated on a per clip basis. There are a few prominent missing features for iPad at launch. So the first one for me is round tripping. This is what allows you to move your project from your iPad to your Mac, to your Mac, to your iPad, and just move back and forth seamlessly between multiple devices. Fortunately, it's not the case. You can export your project from iPad and move it to Mac, but you can't move one from your Mac to your iPad. There's a lot of features that are supported on the Mac that aren't supported on the iPad, which is why this seems to be missing, at least for launch. Hopefully Apple figures something out, but I'm glad you can at least move the project from your iPad to your Mac in some way. Other features that are missing, there's more advanced color grading available on the Mac. There are third-party plugins available for Final Cut on the Mac, though Apple does say third-party plugins or content at least is coming to the iPad, just not right now. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of missing transitions, effects, titles, backgrounds, all of those. There's a lot more available on the Mac side of things than the iPad. External monitor support isn't great. When I connected to my Apple display, it just popped it up in a window on the screen and it just didn't feel very native. Even iMovie has better external support where you can preview in one window while keeping your workflow in the other. And I wish Apple had done something similar for Final Cut, and I think that it will. That said, there are a lot of iPad exclusive features that are pretty sweet. You can use the built-in Apple Silicon to automatically remove a background without having to use any chroma key, green screen, anything like that. You can use the Apple Pencil to scrub through your timeline as well as just draw right on the screen to add title and text effects to your work. You can use the really nice built-in professional camera where you can monitor your audio and timestamps. You can control things like white balance and exposure, as well as controlling the aspect ratio and other features. It's really neat and I kind of wish Apple would bring its own native pro camera to the iPhone as well. So that is Final Cut Pro for iPad. There are definitely some missing features here, but overall I think this application is a great first step and I'm excited to see what Apple brings in future versions of Final Cut. Whether you're doing something like editing professional projects, editing your own projects, editing some family videos, Final Cut is definitely the way to go over iMovie. There's so many more customization options and it's easy to do on your iPad versus your Mac. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Ask your questions there or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Stay tuned, I got a lot more videos on Final Cut and your other Apple gear coming up soon.